Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about Koopman operator theory, uh, why it's useful for representing nonlinear systems, how you get those representations from data, how you could use those coordinate transforms for optimal nonlinear control. And we've been talking about kind of uh, what we want to do, where it's going, what's hard now, and what's, you know, what we want to do in the future. And one of the challenges, um, kind of an essential challenge of modern data-driven dynamical systems is handling multi-scale physics. Okay, so physics with, with multiple scales in space and time. Uh, very, very important to be able to do this, uh, especially with Koopman operator theory. So this is work with uh, Kathleen Champion, uh, who is working with Nathan Kutz and myself on applying these data-driven methods to multi-scale systems in time. Uh, and so this is a really nice uh, use of this Henkel alternative view of Koopman, this kind of time delay Koopman for multi-scale dynamical systems. So she's looked at a number of systems, Vanderpol, Lorentz, Rossler. Uh, here these are just single oscillators, uh, chosen parameter values to be quasi-periodic. And it turns out that time delay coordinates and doing DMD, dynamic mode decomposition, on time delay coordinates gives you nearly perfect closed linear models that capture uh, these kind of nonlinear, essential nonlinear dynamics. And Kathleen has since gone on to show that you can use these delay coordinates for multi-scale systems where you have vast scale separation, fast dynamics, and slow dynamics. Okay? Uh, so essentially, if you increase the rank of your model, of your Havoc model, if you increase the um, kind of how many eigen time delays you use, you get closer and closer and closer to this nonlinear Vanderpol oscillator, um, and also the, the longer or shorter the delays you use, the closer you get to these pure tone sine waves, which are kind of these uh, Koopman embeddings. Okay? Um, and then, like I said, she's also applied this to systems that have a very uh, different separation of time scale. So I have uh, one kind of Vanderpol oscillator that's slow, another Vanderpol oscillator that's fast, and they're coupled. And essentially what she's doing are these data-driven Koopman-based methods to pull out, to tease out the timescale separated dynamics from measurement data. So from limited measurement data, in this case she's not measuring everything, she just has x1 plus x2. Okay, so this is definitely a step towards moving uh, Koopman methods towards multi-scale systems. Um, Nathan Kutz has also written a paper called Multi-Resolution DMD where essentially he uses this multi-resolution in time idea to pull out these um, intermittent phenomena like El Nino modes in the global um, sea surface temperature and things like that. So, you know, very interested in moving towards multi-scale systems with these Koopman and data-driven methods. This is a very nice example moving in that direction, so I encourage you to read this paper. Um, so essentially, we've been looking at all of these, these topics, right? When we don't know equations, we try to build these regression models from data. That's what dynamic mode decomposition, extended DMD, uh, sparse Koopman eigenfunction identification, and deep neural nets all do that when you don't have equations. And they all try to find these coordinate transformations that map my nonlinear system into a linear representation. We can use those linear representations for optimal nonlinear control. So essentially finding those good coordinate systems is, one, is a one-time expensive upfront cost, training that huge neural network or building those delay coordinates. But once I have that representation, I can do optimal nonlinear control much more uh, effectively using simple linear analysis. And then we've also talked about how to extend these methods for kind of these extra difficult problems like chaotic, transient, non-stationary, intermittent phenomena, and multi-scale physics. Okay, and of course, this is you know, not complete. This is not a complete story. There's so much more to do. We need to tie these together. We need to scale these to much larger systems. Um, we need to figure out where it works and where it doesn't, how fast it is. Is that upfront cost worth um, what we benefit from downstream? But at least we see that Koopman can uh, potentially help affect solutions in all of these major, major problems of modern dynamical systems. Okay, so we're excited to see where this goes. Um, you know, excited to have all of you working on this and interested in these problems because this is really uh, a key enabling technology for the future, taking massive amounts of data and getting interpretable 
uh, and effective coordinate system representations where those dynamics look linear so that you can really do powerful things like nonlinear estimation, prediction, and control. Okay, thank you.